today on Fixing the Money Thing. God wants to influence culture for His namesake through you. Government allows stability for people to prosper. Government is important. Prosperity comes out of wise virtues that emanate from morals, that come from a strong biblical uh, religious faith. This is our time in America to choose, mm -hmm. and so don't let it pass. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. Gary and Drinda Cassie, and we're talking about your money. And Drinda, that's, a, that's an exciting topic. It is always. We yes. need to talk about that. Hey, Gary, 40% of Americans, Christian Americans, mm -hmm. I should say, yes. are not registered to vote. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's I think it's a crime. You know, basically Christians have this idea that uh, their spiritual lives are in this compartment and their their life in you know in America, their daily work life is over here. And that's just not how things work. We have to remember that the government is the is the uh, kind of the structure of what we work in. In other words, the government, how laws are passed, enabling us to work and, and commerce and how it's done really affects our prosperity. And as the Bible says, righteousness is to be preserved. God exalts a nation that holds on to righteousness. And so today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're gonna give you a little insight on how to prosper in life. It may not be something you're really familiar with, but it has a lot to do with politics and the government that you live within. So stay with us as we watch some information about politics and government in your life. From Faith Life Church, Gary Cassie. Well, today we're going to talk about government, and uh, I hope that it will inspire you. Uh, so let's jump in there. You know, I've traveled the world many times, not the world, but I've traveled many times to many places in the world. And I have found as well as you have seen in the paper that many nations are impoverished. Here's the thing you need to remember, and I think is kind of it needs to be known, is that many nations that are impoverished have natural resources more than the U.S., great resources, but yet the people are impoverished. The reason they're impoverished is that same word, say the word government. <laughs> government, corruption, blackmail, bribery, government. Albania, we've been there many times. When we first went to Albania back in the oh, years ago, they were just coming out of atheism. They had no value system. There was no religion in that nation. No authorized churches, no churches of any kind. Uh, they drove horses and carts. They didn't have uh, much to eat. They had government farms where they would show up at a destined time and have, a, have attendance and they'd work for the community, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they were impoverished. They had bribery. They couldn't prosper because of what? Government. In the Philippines, we've traveled there, we've done ministry there. And in, in the Philippines, you always carry extra cash because if you're stopped by a police officer, you might need some cash to not buy gas, but to bribe yourself out of a situation. In fact, you'd be surprised how many nations bribery is a way of life, a way of life in many nations. Zimbabwe, a country where the average income is $487 a year. The government of Zimbabwe released its largest bank note in 2009, catch this, $100 trillion bill. A $100 trillion bill in that nation, which, is, which shares, shares a lot of the hyperinflation which has ravaged that nation. In fact, the average lifespan in that nation is only 37 years for men, 34 for women, 20% die of AIDS, government. Sierra Leone uh, has relied on mining. One of the largest creating or 
mining diamonds. Diamonds is a big deal there, shipping all over the world. Uh, one of the largest global ports in the world. Uh, finds, finding all kind of natural resources there. Uh, the largest producer of titanium, uh, major producer of gold. Yet despite this, 70% of the people in that country are impoverished. Why? Government. Government. Uganda. One of the poorest nations in the world, we have pastors on staff there and have been on staff for probably 12, 13 years. Uh, 38% of the people make less than $1.20 a day. Substantial natural resources, very fertile soil, regular rainfall, copper, gold, other minerals, oil, yet they're impoverished. What's the difference? Government. Why do people try to come into the United States from Mexico? Government. Government allows stability for people to prosper. Government is important. Did I say important? Let me make sure I say the word important. It's in government, uh, government's important to God. See, Christians have this mindset that I'm a believer, I belong to the kingdom of God, so I'm not concerned about this earthly government. Wrong. God led David to confront an earthly government that was confronting his nation. You see, you can't separate the two. It's like when I was taking my pilot training. You know, we have this, this uh, training that you, you train called stalls. You know, when a plane loses lift, it falls. And you have to learn how to recover from that as a pilot. I didn't like that because when you get into a stall, everything begins to go weird. You know, it's like this, you, you know, you go into a spin. You don't know, you know, it just, I didn't like that. I, was, I, I got nervous about that. And so one day I told the instructor, I said, man, I just don't like practice in these stalls. He looked at me and said, I'm in here with you. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. I'm here with you. And so what I'm saying is, you're in this boat called the United States of America. You may deny it, but where it goes, you go. And you are in the same boat. And so you should have great concern about this nation and the government that you live within. Last time I checked, the money you spend has United States on it. And if God wants to prosper you, he has to prosper you through that system. Because as long as you're alive, it takes money. Amen. So you can't say, well, I don't need that system. I got God's system. Well, that's true. But what God's system does, it translates into influence in this system for prosperity. Yes. So we can't just put our heads in the sand and think, well, that's not my problem. That's not my issue. You know, God's going to prosper me. Well, he, he wants to prosper you, but he couldn't prosper that nation of Israel until someone dealt with Goliath and the Philistines. He had to talk to Gideon. The nation's whole harvest was stolen every year until someone named Gideon had the courage to come up and confront the governments, the Midianites, Canaanites, all those guys coming in and taking over their land. He had to confront them. If you want to prosper, you want to have God's best, you can't live in a vacuum. God wants to influence culture for his namesake through you. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus had just come out of the, uh, the wilderness, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and is preaching in his hometown. And they're saying, well, we know this guy. You know, this is the, the carpenter's son. And, but he speaks like someone has authority. But the Bible says he couldn't do many things here. Let's find out what it says. Jesus says this in verse number 4. Only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And verse 5 says what? He could not do any miracles there except a few. And why? He said he was amazed at their lack of faith or unbelief. Now, I thought you said God can do anything. Can God do anything? Yeah, but he already did it. You see, he already gave the earth to men. Genesis 126, Hebrews chapter 2. See, he, we talk about this all the time, but he gave the earth to men. He said, you rule over it. And that he left nothing that was in the earth that was not subject to man. He placed man to rule over it. So essentially what I'm saying is, is that why couldn't Jesus do the works there? Why could he not? I mean, he could not heal the people. You have to know the answer to that. The answer is he had no jurisdiction. The government of God had no jurisdiction because the government of men would not receive his government, would not receive his jurisdiction. Does that make sense? You understand that's important. So government is extremely important. 
the kingdom of God is a government that is infiltrating this government called the kingdom of darkness. Now, in Romans chapter 10, verse 10 says, this is how you were saved, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. Now, what does that mean? In the kingdom of men, we have jurisdiction. If we'll agree with heaven, if God can find a man or woman in the earth realm who will agree with heaven, it gives him legality to move his righteousness or his law, his government into the earth realm. You see how that operates. Now, so if we believe we're justified, that's a legal term which makes it legal for God's kingdom to have influence in the earth realm. But that's not all. Remember, that's not how it ends. There's more to this whole sentence. What does it say? It says, for with your heart you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth you confess and are saved. Who has jurisdiction here in the earth realm? Just point at yourself. I do. So even though it's legal, you believe in your heart, and it's legal, heaven legally has the permission and legality to flow into the earth realm, it still can't do that until the one that has the key turns the car on to the one that has the jurisdiction releases it. Remember the scripture, the Bible says that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What does that mean? Heaven is waiting for us to, to bring to bear his government and then heaven backs it up just like a sheriff is backed up by the government when he wears a badge. That's you. You're the ambassador of this government. So to God, government is very important. More of today's message in a moment. The Freedom Package from Fixing the Money Thing is a critical resource for every American who is concerned about our country's current state of affairs. For your best gift of any size, Gary and Drenda want you to have Silence is Not an Option, a two-disc series recently preached at Faith Life Church to inspire you to engage our culture and be a voice for righteousness. Christians have this mindset that I'm a believer, I belong to the kingdom of God, so I'm not concerned about this earthly government. Wrong. Inspiring and informative, silence is not an option, reminds us that government is not an option and we must do our part. Call, write, or visit GaryCassie.com and we'll get this must-have resource to you for any size gift to support Faith Life Ministries today. The second part of the Freedom Package is a new American Standard version of the Founders Bible by well-known Christian historian, David Barton. This is the most practical, life-changing book you will see. For your gift of $59 or more, you'll receive a hardback copy of the Founders Bible, an inspirational look at our nation's history and the scriptures that moved our founding fathers to build this country. This will transform a generation, it will transform a nation. The Founders Bible includes a timeline of American history, beautiful illustrations of our founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and more. Loaded with historical facts and quotes that leave no doubt that our nation was founded on Christian principles by devoted leaders, the Founders Bible is a handbook for every American patriot, an historical heirloom that will bless your family for generations to come. So, you get Silence is Not an Option for your gift of any size, or the two-disc set, plus the Founder's Bible, for a $59 or more gift of support today. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now. Celebrate your freedom and make your stand for righteousness in America. Get the Freedom Package today. Now, with more, Gary and Drenda Cassie. It's an excellent teaching that Gary did two weeks. It's in Silence is Not an Option. Why we need to have a voice, a righteous voice in the land, salt and light affecting every area of life. You teach that about economics, but it also applies to government as well. Well, government, like I said, is the structure we work in. So it affects money, family, everything we do. But we have to engage the culture. We can't just stay in our four walls of our churches and think, you know, something's going to happen. You know, God empowers us to engage. That's, you know, we have the grace to engage. Speaking of engaging, Dorinda, I was really pleased. You had a great opportunity to talk to uh, Michelle Bachman. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes. You know, just like David Barton talks about in his Founder's Bible, we need to engage. Well, I got the opportunity to have an engagement speaking with Michelle Bachman. What an amazing woman of God. I was impressed she got involved with politics out of her faith conviction to change lives for children. Watch this interview now. I think you'll enjoy it. 
We're back with Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. And uh, Michelle, what did you think of the Democratic National Convention this year? I think we've never seen anything like it before. And I think if people weren't paying attention, they need to know what happened. I was in the convention at Tampa. I wasn't, that was the Republican convention. I wasn't at the Democrat convention in Charlotte, but I saw it on television. And we saw the platform. If, if your viewers are supporters of Israel, they'll be shocked because for the first time, the Democrats came out with a platform that did not have the support of Israel that it used to have formerly. And I think that's, again, very indicative of where the president's coming from. The president saw the platform. The president approved the platform. Yes. So this is the Obama way, and yes. this is no secret. They aren't keeping this away from the American people. They're very obvious. The other thing that they left out was any mention of God. The word God wasn't even in the platform. Shameful. Also, Jerusalem wasn't present in the platform. And many, if for people who didn't see this, there was a vote taken on the floor of the convention because this became embarrassing for President Obama and embarrassing for the Democrats. So they were going to insert the word God, not in terms of who God is, but they just were going to put in the term God-given potential. <laughs> so it's demoting God even more. And they had the vote and uh, they had the vote and the vote failed to put God and Jerusalem back in the platform. So they took a vote a second time. The vote failed a second time. They took a third vote on putting God and Jerusalem back in the platform, and it failed a third time, but the fellow who was at the front counted it as though they had said yes. So really? this was, this was. This, well, then I saw them boo it when they, they made booed. it. They booed, that's yes. right. The crowd was booing when, when God and Jerusalem were added back to the platform. So don't be deceived. Right, shouldn't that tell people this, what the real motive this is behind the, it? This is the real values mm -hmm. and the real view. Because don't forget, this is an administration that recognizes every nation's capital in the world you know, over 120 countries in the world. Every capital we recognize. There's only one capital that the Obama administration doesn't recognize. That's Jerusalem. Really? I'll yeah. tell you, that is serious business because Very. God says in his word that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Israel. It is not to be divided. And in 1967, Jerusalem was united. And we need to stand for Israel and we need to stand for Jerusalem. Yes. And, and this, we want God's blessing. We want God's blessing. And that's why I firmly believe that we need to move the United States Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and keep it in Jerusalem to tell the world that we, the United States, have Israel's back. Because mm -hmm. in, it says in the book of Genesis that those who bless Israel will be blessed. I believe that, that uh, we need to take God at his word in Genesis and we need to bless Israel because we as a nation have been blessed. I agree. What would you say to the women of our nation, moms like yourself, like me, that have stood for family, stood for the sanctity of marriage, how can they make a difference? What can they do? You're, you're outspoken, wonderful, uh, well-spoken, I should say, woman of God. There are women of God out there that are being silenced. What would you say to those women? You, you are so valuable. You are so valuable. And we need your voice now more than ever. God raised up Deborah's um, it, throughout the Bible to yes. stand strong. God used women, strong yes. women throughout the Bible. Pray for our nation, fast for our nation, but work. It's not enough just to vote. Go through your own email list. You have a contact list. Email everyone on your contact list. Text them, phone them. Tell them, look, I'm gonna vote. This is who I'm voting for, this is why. Maybe uh, write a letter to all of your email list friends. Send that email letter out and say, this is who I'm voting for, here's why. If you don't think you're good with words or you don't understand the issues, if it's even only three sentences, just say, this is the most important election of my lifetime and of our children and of the church. And we've got to stand up for religious values, and I am, and then send it out and sign your name. Make sure you're registered to vote and vote. But it, bring your family together, your adult children, uh, your neighbors, people at work. Uh, you can put a voter guide out at your church to let people know where the candidates stand on issues. There's a lot we can do, but don't wake up the morning after the election and think, oh, if only I would have done this much more, maybe we would have won. Again, I come from the state where just by a little over 100 votes, 
we lost a U.S. Senate seat. And that one Senate seat gave us Obamacare and gave us Dodd-Frank, which is killing the, the credit industry. So much happened because we lost one seat by a little over 100 votes. Please. Please get involved. Every vote counts, especially if you're from Florida and Ohio and the state of Virginia and Wisconsin and Michigan. These are swing states, and there's other swing states out there, or even if you're not from that state. For instance, I've got a very tough re-election this time. People can phone from home. They don't, if they want to see me re-elected, they can go to my website, michellebachman.com. They can donate money. They can volunteer for me no matter what state or country they live in, and you can phone from home, and you can call to get people out to vote. There's a lot we can do, but get involved and start a prayer vigil in your church. Ooh, I believe yes. in intercessory prayer. Yes. I'm an intercessor myself. Get down on your knees and do what Second Chronicles 7.14 says. Cry out to God, confess your sins, turn from your sins. In other words, stop walking in your known sins and ask God to heal our land. He yes. will do it. He, we can trust the Lord to be true to his word. What can pastors do? Because there's always controversy. Preach. Preach, 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 righteousness. preach righteousness from the pulpit. And uh, it, it, no church has ever been prosecuted for speaking out about an election. Don't let, don't let yourself be silenced by the ACLU and by what I consider an unconstitutional law to silence the pulpits. There's freedom of speech everywhere in this country except the pulpit. That's against our United States con Constitution. Every pastor needs to preach. Preach righteousness from the pulpit. Remember, it was, it was the pastors at the beginning of our country who really were the backbone of the revolution. They preached righteousness. They called on the people to get involved, and that's how we had the revolution. So I'm calling on pastors, preach about marriage and the family, preach about wise stewardship, and people will make the right decision. Yes, I believe that. I believe we have an opportunity. God's given us Amen. an opportunity to choose righteousness. Amen. Righteousness exalts a nation. Choose ye this day yes. whom you'll serve. Yes. Deuteronomy, 6, Deuteronomy 6, read that. And that lays out before us the promises of God and the ways that we can choose. And this is our time in America to choose. Mm -hmm. And so don't let it pass. Uh, you know, as we're closing, Michelle, I just want to ask you the relationship between economics and morality, because a lot of people say this election and what's going on in our nation is all about the economy. Is it really about the economy as much as it is about the morality? Well, wise people have said, and that would be George Washington, that a nation is built upon religion, which is our faith. That's the first building block. The second building block are morals. What are the morals that come out of our religious faith? And from their virtue, what are the virtues of our nation? And from there, when you have that rock solid biblical basis, that's where you build prosperity. Prosperity comes out of wise virtues that emanate from morals, that come from a strong biblical uh, religious faith. This is nothing to be ashamed of. This is something to be proud of. Yes. So we need to stand for that faith, and that's how our nation is prosperous and free. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I wish you the very, very best in the election and Thank in your future. You. And thank you for taking a stand of righteousness as a woman of God, a mother um, like you, a mother that makes a difference. Thank you for joining Amen. us. Amen. If people have more questions, they can go to michellebachman.com. Thanks, Dorinda. Thank you. The Freedom Package from Fixing the Money Thing is a critical resource for every American who is concerned about our country's current state of affairs. For your best gift of any size, Gary and Drenda want you to have Silence is Not an Option, a two-disc series recently preached at Faith Life Church to inspire you to engage our culture and be a voice for righteousness. Christians have this mindset that I'm a believer, I belong to the kingdom of God, so I'm not concerned about this earthly government. Wrong! Inspiring and informative, Silence is Not an Option reminds us that government is not an option and we must do our part. Call, write, or visit GaryCassie.com and we'll get this must-have resource to you for any size gift to support Faith Life Ministries today. The second part of the Freedom Package is a new American Standard version of the Founders Bible by well-known Christian historian David Barton. This is the most practical, life-changing book you'll see 
For your gift of $59 or more, you'll receive a hardback copy of the Founder's Bible, an inspirational look at our nation's history and the scriptures that moved our founding fathers to build this country. This will transform a generation. It will transform a nation. The Founder's Bible includes a timeline of American history, beautiful illustrations of our founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and more. Loaded with historical facts and quotes that leave no doubt that our nation was founded on Christian principles by devoted leaders, the Founder's Bible is a handbook for every American patriot, an historical heirloom that will bless your family for generations to come. So, you get Silence is Not an Option for your gift of any size, or the two-disc set, plus the Founder's Bible, for a $59 or more gift of support today. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now. Celebrate your freedom and make your stand for righteousness in America. Get the Freedom Package today. I really enjoyed speaking with Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and how she got involved with politics. She wanted to make a difference for yes. children, for families, and it caused her to engage the culture and get involved. And that's what we're asking you to do today. That's right, Drenda. You know, 40% of, of Christians don't vote. What, what kind of impact is that? I mean, you have to get involved with your life and you have to take responsibility to change your culture or you're going to be changed by the culture. So yes. I want to encourage you as a believer who, you know, is the righteousness in the earth. You're the only salt and light there is. If you do not bring light to the, to the table, it's not going to show up. God has ordained you to do that, and I want to challenge you to do that. Go to our website, GaryCassie.com. Call the number on your screen. We'd love to help you. Get the materials. Get knowledge. It was a pleasure being with you again on Fixing the Money Thing. We'll see you next time. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. When you need God's help, prayer is always the answer. Pastor Gary understands and wants to help. That's why he has caring friends standing by, ready to pray with you. No matter what you're facing, there is hope. Call and let's agree together. Caring prayer partners are available faithfully Monday through Friday from 9 to 6.30. You can also leave your prayer request at GaryCasey.com. Just click and know someone will be agreeing with you in prayer for your need to be met. Call or log on today. Want to know more? Read and comment on Gary's blog. Partner with Faith Life Now. Find out where Gary and Drenda are speaking. Send us your prayer requests. Order more life-changing resources. Find out what's happening at the Now Center. Invite Gary to speak at your church or event. Watch archived Fixing the Money Thing episodes. All these things and more are waiting for you at GaryCasey.com. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more, more impact, more purpose, more of God, more of life. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161, Faith Life Church meets in the Now Center with services Saturdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Come experience the good life at Faith Life Church. Fixing the Money Thing is part of the worldwide outreach of Faith Life Now.